Bro, dude, I literally spent like 10 minutes before this video trying to make my ha hair work today, but for some reason it's so poofy, I don't get it. What's going on? Well, unfortunately, you guys are gonna have to deal with it, okay? Let's just get into the video. Hello, everybody, I'm Karara, and today we are gonna be doing the US Open bronze contest. It's gonna be very cool. And a bunch of you guys wanted me to do the silver contest as well, we will get to that. But first, we're gonna start with bronze, because I need to warm up, okay? Can't just jump into the silver, you know what I'm saying? And also, we got Alcadi- Wait, what? How do you even say that? Acaudamia! One, two, three, let's go! We got we got some thematic stuff going on here. I appreciate that, I appreciate that. Okay, let's look at number one. Bessie the Cow has enrolled in a computer science PhD program, holy moly, as what? <laughs> OP, driven by her love of computer science, and also the allure of one day becoming Dr. Bessie, indeed. Having worked for some time on her academic research, she has now published N papers, okay? and her IA's paper has accumulated CI citations. Okay. Bessie has heard that the, an academic success can be measured by their H index, where it's the largest number H, such that the research has at least H papers with at least H citations. Okay. All right, so to up her H index, Bessie is planning to write a survey article citing several of her past papers, okay? And due to the page limit, she can include at most L citations in the survey. And of course, she could cite each of her papers at most once. And take note that all these guys are 10 to the 5, so we're gonna have to do something not too dumb. <laughs> we can't be completely brute force, I'm assuming. So help her, uh, Bessie determine the maximum H index she may achieve after writing the survey. Okay. Okay, okay, so she can add 1 to any of her like citation counts, basically, up to like L. Okay. That's kind of big brain. Alright, so the first line has N and L. Um, the second line has N. Okay, so that's basically your citation counts and your sample output too. Okay. Okay, so essentially we have 1, 100, 2, 3, and essentially like we can either, we have, we can add 1 to L of them, right? And essentially you want to maximize this so you can maximize your H index. Okay, so another way to think about it is like um, your H index is basically like, okay, so let's just say we start from 1, right? Then essentially um, you only need one of them to be greater than one, right? That, well, okay, so you basically know that your maximum H index is like N, right? You can't go above N because then you would need like, like if you said five, right? Then you would need five of them that are above five, but you don't even have five things to start with. So that's not gonna work, okay. So then you start with N, so four, clearly that doesn't work because in order to get four greater than four, you'd have to add three to this guy and that's not gonna work, okay. If we go to three, then we basically need three of them to be greater than three, in which case we only had to add one to this guy, right? So essentially you look at the top three guys, and essentially we look at the smallest one and see how far it will take to get to there. And if it's within one, then we should be good, right? Okay, so I guess like the idea is you look at the, okay, so let's just sort it, right? So essentially you have like one, two, three, 100, right? So let's say you have each, right? And you take a look at the top H guys, right? And then you had to make, and then you had to count how many of the top H guys are below, right, are below H, and you have to make sure that all of them are within one of H, right? Yeah, so basically you can look at the, like, H smallest one, right, like, so, uh, if H is equal to, uh, let's say three, right, then you look at this guy, he's a third from the top, and you basically say, is that one with, like, is that one away from three, right? If it is, then we could increase it theoretically if we had enough L, right? So how do we implement this, like, well, I mean, this is not really an algorithm yet, let's think about it more. So essentially you need the um, third smallest guy to be um, to be at least within one, right? And you need the number of guys who are within one of it to be like less than L, right? So how do you find how many of them there are? Okay, yeah, so you sort it, right? Then you go here, let's just say there was like a bunch of twos, right? So let's say like one, two, two, oh, I mean one, two, 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 right? Then essentially we would say, oh, okay, so we have twos starting from here, that's within one, right? And then we see that the biggest two, like the rightmost two that we could find is over here. And we say, oh, okay, so in order to get three, we would have to convert like all three of these guys to threes. In which case we would need L is greater than or equal to three, right? So this only takes, this only takes um, N time, right? Maximum, right? You basically start at the smallest two and then you keep going up until you reach the last two, right? And then you just count how many of them there are. Okay, so I think we got an algorithm, right? Like for the general case, like let's just say it's like, I don't know, three, 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 five or something, right? And we put like four. Then we look at three, we're like, okay, it's within one of four, then we keep going up. And we're like, oh, this is the last three, there are three threes, and basically we would need to add one three times, in which case we need L is greater than or equal to three, and we check if that works. Okay. Oh, well, I guess that doesn't really work, because then you'd have to go through N H's, and you'd also have to like spend N time going here, right? Well, actually, no, you can use upper bound to find the top, so it basically takes log N time to do that. Huh, there's a smart way to do it without actually like, okay, like theoretically, you could binary search on the H, right? Theoretically, 
but <laughs> I feel like that's too big brain for bronze. There gotta be a simpler way to do it. I think that might be the like silver solution. So let us see, where would, how would you do this? Well, could we even do it in like end time instead of end log end time? <laughs> there might be a big brain way to do that. So if you go backwards, right, then over here, it would have to be like within one or it would have to be greater than one. Then it would have to be greater than three. So this is one, two, three, four. So as long as the top one is within one of the bottom one, it should be doable. And then you can keep going backwards and you can track how many of them are equal. Oh wait, yeah, that, that's faster. That's like n time, dude. Oh, it's theoretically you could do log squared, but you could also do n time. Huh, that's actually kind of interesting. Okay, so basically the two ways you could do it are, right? Like, let's see. Basically the two ways I was thinking of, right? You could basically either like binary search on H, right? You basically set an H and you could check it pretty quickly using the strategy, right? You find the lower bound, you find the upper bound and you're good, right? Well, no, no, you don't even know how to find the lower bound. You know the lower bound is just like four away from the top. And then you find the upper bound and then you find how many there are and then you just put that, right? As long as it's L is greater than three, then it's valid. So that's a binary search way to do it. Or we could just directly find it in end time, right? We could do it like start from the ending and we keep going backwards. And essentially we just check is this one greater than like, or like, is this one at least within one of the bottom one? And then we check like if it is one away from the bottom one, right? Then you basically find how many are equal and then you add one, right? So that'll take end time. You start from the end and go backwards. Okay. Well, or you can start from the beginning and go forward. Actually, no. Yeah, you know, let's do the binary search one. I think that's the most straightforward one. It makes the most sense. Let's do that. And we're going to use Python today because I did not use Python last time for the last contest. So it'll be very fun. And we will call it, what, what should we call it? Uh, let's see. Alcad Academia 1. Okay, so we do um, n comma l is equal to uh, input dot strip dot split and then we do map int comma that. All right, then we also need our c, so c is equal to map int um, comma input dot strip dot split. Okay, nice. And then essentially we will have a function to check whether an h works, right? So def check and then we'll pass in an h and we probably sort our C first, so uh, C or sort C. Okay, so to check H, you basically find the like the H one from the right. Okay, so you do C of len H minus or len C minus H, and then you basically gotta check that that is not equal to so. I'll just say, let's just call it like, I don't know what the cool number A is equal to that. And essentially, if A is equal, equal to, or greater than or equal, or okay, let's say, so if A is greater than H, or greater than or equal to H, then we're good, right? Because that means everything above A is also going to be like greater than or equal to H. So then we could just say return true. However, if it is equal to A, right? So if A is equal to H minus one, right? Then that basically means we need to check how many of them there are that we have to increment, right? So we could basically do upper bound. Uh, how do you do upper bound in Python? Python upper bound, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, bisect is the way to do it. Okay, so this is first occurrence, where the last occurrence, find is the greatest value, smaller. Yeah, right mode, okay, okay. So bisect right is what we want. All right, so we'll say like um, r is equal to bisect right of c comma what? C comma H minus one, right? Okay, and then let's just try, well, okay. What else do we need? Oh, <laughs> I need to import that, okay. From bisect import, bisect right. Whoops, C is equal to uh, C dot sort, no, sorted C, okay. Wait, can you, <laughs> dude, I haven't written the Python in so long, holy. Okay, there, we could just do that. So now, if like R, or we could just return now, we could return R minus, um, r minus <laughs> uh, len c minus h plus one, right? That will give you how many there are. And then that is greater than l or greater than equal to l. There we go. No, no, less than, okay. So we want it to be less than or equal to l. So that's good. So less than or equal to l. All right. And then finally else, probably should do an else if here. I mean, not that it matters. And then lastly, if it's none of those, then we just return false. Okay. And now we just write a very normal binary search, but let us just check that this is working. Let's just see whether our bisect right actually works. So we'll have like, um, let's put this and we'll put like three, for example. And if we run it, print R, if we run it on four, zero, um, three, 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 five, it should give us an answer of two, right? Because zero, one, two, two is the right most three. And <laughs> no, whoop list of these guys. 
Last occurrence of four is present at. Wait, what does bisect right even do? <laughs> Hold up. Right mode insertion point. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so it, it should be minus one from that. So, okay, okay. So that one makes sense. So it'd be two, zero, and then it'll, um, what? Two, zero, yeah, okay. So let us try this. So now what we gotta do is we gotta implement our binary search. So we basically have our left thing. Left is equal to zero. Our right is equal to len of C. And essentially, while left is left is less than, or left plus one is less than right, we'll just keep binary searching. Okay. So if check left, or so we'll say um, H is equal to left plus right over two, and then if uh, check h, then we want to, that means it works, which means we got to increase it, right? So we'll say left is equal to h, and then else we do right is equal to h. And eventually we just print out left. Okay, so theoretically if I do 4, 3, and then this thing, it should give us an answer of 4, right? So let's try that. 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 5. What? <laughs> Hold up. Um, okay, let's try printing out check 4. So check 4 should go here, right? And then it'll go over here. It'll see that C0 is equal to H minus 1. Then it will try this, and it should return true. Let's try it. Check 4. 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 5. And it said true, so I guess... Um, yeah, okay, that, that, one, that one should work better if we do... Wait, what? Uh, why is it never checking? Okay, let's just try it. Let's just see what it's checking. Print H. 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 5. Okay, so it checks 4. Okay, and then it goes 2, 3, 4. Wait, so if check 4 is true, then why... Okay, so left should equal... Oh, <laughs> left, left, very nice. Good stuff, okay. 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 5. Alright, nice. This should be working. Let's do it. Theoretically, let's just double check that it works on the sample test cases. Nope, <laughs> bro. Let's just see. Okay, let's just print r minus len. Or let's see. Print h and print r minus len c. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> bro, I need parentheses. God dang it. Why are parentheses so hard? This is so sad. Okay. 4, 0, 1, 100, 2, 3. Hey, there you go. Now it's working. Very nice. And we'll try it again on the other one. And that's working. And finally, 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 5. And it's working. Let's go. Okay. So what's good about this one is that it's log n squared. So it's way faster than we need it to be. But it should be good. Okay. Like, theoretically, you don't even have to implement this binary search. But it just makes it faster. Moment of truth, eh? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Very nice, let's go. <laughs> okay, now we can move on to Alcadamia 2. Why are there so many test cases? Okay, there we go. Alcadamia 2. All right, Bessie is applying to computer science graduate school. Very nice. <laughs> well, why is she first applying to PhD? Okay, and has secured an interview at a prestigious computer science lab. All right. However, to avoid offending anyone, Bessie is interested in determining the relative seniority Bro, why are these questions so long? Of the N current members of the lab. Okay. No two members of the lab have the same seniority, but determining their seniorities might be tricky. Okay. To do so, Bessie will look at the lab's publications. Each publication contains an author's list, an ordering of N lab members. Okay. The list is in decreasing order in terms of effort. Okay. So if they're equivalent effort, they're ordered alphabetically. Okay, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> a more senior researcher never puts in more effort than a junior researcher. That is a life lesson you gotta take away from this one. For example, in a lab consisting of junior student Elsie and more so senior professor Mildred, a very senior professor Dean, then there may be a paper if all of them put in different amounts of effort. Okay. Seems legit. And if they put in the same amount of work, it might be turned around. Alright. So, basically, you're, you're giving K publications and you want to determine, um, Who's more senior? Okay, so we got this. All right, so I guess the first thing to notice is that you only have information if they're out of alphabetical order, right? Because if they're in alphabetical order, then they either might have like different amounts of effort or they might be like, um, they might just be having put in the same amount of effort, right? So essentially you can only like find stuff out by looking at flips in the seniority. I mean, sorry, flips in the alphabetical ordering. 
Yeah, so like for the first one, D E M is pretty useless, right? Because like it's <laughs> just in alphabetic order, so we don't know. But then from this one, we basically know that. Wait, let's see. So how does this work? Um, so it has n lines. Okay. So for J is not equal. Okay, so it should be a one, and then zero, or question mark. And why are there B's? What are the B's? Okay, so B is just like the diagonal. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay, so. For this one, we can't tell anything, right? Because it's in alphabetical order, that doesn't tell us anything. And then for this one, I guess we can look at which are flipped, right? So E and M are still in alphabetical I mean, alphabetical order, right? So we know that this is flipped and this is flipped. So the only thing we know, right, is that Elsie is, like, Dean is senior to Elsie and Dean is senior to Mildred, right? But we don't know anything else because, like, the rest might just be due to alphabetical ordering. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, the only ones that are there is, you know, that relative to Dean, those dudes are senior, and, like, or Dean is senior to those dudes, and you don't know about the other two. Okay, let's try applying the same strategy here, right? So, this one is the same flipped over here, so, you know, these are ones. Wait, what? LC, Mildred, Dean. So, shouldn't this be a 1-1 one, one or something? What are the three? Oh, okay, so the first one just gives the names. Okay, okay, and then this is the... Wait, what? But still... Elsie, Dean, Mildred. Okay. Wait, what, why are these flipped then? Um, I'm very confused. Hold up. So, wait, shit, aren't these the same? <laughs> aren't these seniority, like, um, ordering the same? Then why, why did this get flipped? Hopefully that's a mistake. What? Yeah, I don't get that. Why did this, like, move down there if it's the same thing? Okay, so I, J, um, J, character J should be 1 if the ith member is more senior. Okay, so, yeah, so this should be 1-1, one, one, right? I, I don't get, okay, whatever. Let's just pretend that that's a mistake. Okay, so I think our strategy works, right? Basically, just look at the ones that are out of alphabetical order, and then we should be good. What is N? Oh, the N and K are, like, tiny, dude, so we should be fine, okay? We could just brute force this dude to death. All right, all right, so what else is there to consider? Like, how do you figure out which ones are out of order alphabetically? Honestly, we can just go through all pairs and then see if they're out of order, and then we know. Okay, so we go to Python, we do academia2. All right, let's read in our dudes, and L, or no, KN, equals map int input dot split, dot strip dot split. Okay, and we could do, now we can just go through it individually, and we shouldn't have to worry too much. We just ignore the first line, right? Because, like, the first line doesn't really give us any information, I guess. Does it give us any information? I feel like it does not, but... Oh, 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 I guess... Oh, oh, <laughs> I get it. That's why it's out of order, because the first line is out of order. Oh, okay, okay, that makes so much more sense. Bruh, <laughs> I'm so bad. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So we do care about the first line, and we'll say call it, like, ordering or something, or cows. Cows equals input dot strip dot split. And we should probably listify this. So essentially we want to like give each cow an index, right? So we'll basically make a dictionary of cows. So for C in cows, and we'll basically just say, um, we can say, we'll keep a dictionary, int to, or cow to int, cow, cow index, cow int, how that? All right, and then we can basically say that cow int C, or we should probably just do for I in range cows, range land cows. And you can say cow end i, or cow end cow's i, is equal to i. Alright. And then we basically need to keep track of our seniority, right? So seniority we'll call like s, and then it's basically going to be a n by n matrix. So we could do uh, 0 times n for i in range n. Okay, so now all we got to do is we just got to go through all of the, um, we just got to go through all of the, <laughs> all the publications, right? And we basically just got to see which ones are out of order. So for i in range k, we will basically do um, like order, order is equal to um, input dot strip dot split. And essentially we'll just go through all pairs, right? So for um, i in range n, for, or we should probably do something different, uh, j and k, how about that? For j or k in range n, or j plus 1 comma n so we don't repeat any pairs and essentially okay does python do um okay let's just try this python oh yeah okay so is a less than c is a b less than a a okay so we could just do that that makes sense so if um j or so if cows j is less than cows k or greater than that means it's out of order then that basically means that we know that the cow after has to be senior to the cow before. So then we know that um, S, K, J. So that means, so K is a row, right? So 
um, the k row is whether you're senior to the other person, right? Okay, so kj should be equal 1, and sjk should equal 0. And we should probably start it off all with question marks, right? Yeah, okay, that makes a bit more sense. And we should probably also do like <laughs> this where it is. Oh, we could just do n i between that. And we could say s i i is equal to b. Okay, and after that, I think we should be literally done. So we just got to print out our array. So for row in like, for row in, um, in what, s? Uh, for like, I don't know, c in s in row, then we basically just print out, or no, we can just print out row, right? We could do print out dot join row, and we should be good. Okay, let's test it out. Um, okay, so that is kind of working. Oh, I don't think we're supposed to put spaces, so we gotta do that. Cal J, okay, let's just print high or something. Let's see, print high. And this should basically give us six highs, and we should be good. But why is Cal's J never greater than Cal's I? Cal's J, Cal's K. Okay. So you go look at Dean and Elsie. What? <laughs> oh, oh, it's looking at the wrong thing. It has to look at order. Whoops. Oh, okay. So this has to be, um, this has to be, what? It has to be Cal and, okay. So Cal and K. Probably make this simpler by saying Cal and, or no, and one is equal to Cal and K. And in two is equal to Cal and J. And we could say, or <laughs> probably I should not confuse myself. Okay, so in two, in one, and in one, or sorry, in two, in one. There we go. And this should be uh, order J. Okay. Um, <laughs> what? Hold up. How, how are the ins the same? What? Oh, did I? <laughs> okay, bruh. All right, there we go. Hey, let's go. It's working. Okay, let's see if the other one works. Let us see. Shall it work? Please work. Let us not go. What? Wait, so Elsie being better than Dean. We already know that, though. Oh, oh I guess. Uh, huh. So I guess them being in that order. Wait, what? Mildred is more senior than Elsie. Why is that? Oh, because they're not next to each other. Oh, wait, shoot. <laughs> this might not be particularly big brain. If they're not next to each other, then it's also, like, if they're not alphabetical in that order. Huh. Let us see. Okay, <laughs> we guess we got to change it up a little bit, right? So, essentially the idea is when you go from left to right, you can basically divide it up into parts that are alphabetically ordered, right? And essentially if they're in different parts, then, you know, you're good. Wait, so all the guys in a different part and the guys who are in that other part should be fine? Oh, okay, so yeah, th this was not like the right way to do it, okay. The right way to do it is you got to go from left to right, and you got to check which ones are in which group, right? Or which ones are, you could break it into chunks that are alphabetically ordered. And how, how do you do that efficiently? Because then there might be like a ton of pairs, right? Okay, so let us just do this. So we'll start here and we'll basically have a group number, right? So group is equal to zero. And then um, we'll do previous. We could do groups or G is equal to zero times N. And essentially, we just go through it in order, right? So for i in range n, and we should probably start from 1. The only time we move to a new group is if we go down alphabetically, right? Because if we're going increasingly alphabetically, then we're already good. So only if our order i is greater or less than order i minus 1, then we want to do group plus equals 1. And we just set g of i to equal group. Okay, and now we could do our pair thing, right? So for i in range, oh, I probably should not have deleted the old stuff. Let me get it back. Okay, we still need that. So we have our groups now, and now only if they're in different groups, then we're good. So if a uh, group, let's see. Yeah, so group j is greater than order k, or group j is greater than group k, or less than, less than. okay. Then, yeah, then, then we know, okay. Oops, G, G, where is this? Okay. All right, nice, now it's working, okay. Very epic, and we could try with the original again. Hey, let's go, it's working. All right, so now we just got to submit it and we should be good. All right, let us see if it worked. <laughs> Bruh, what, why, where's the zero coming from? I don't get it. Print, where, am I printing somewhere? Print, 
It printed like before anything happened. How did that even happen? Uh, oh, <laughs> bruh. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I put a zero in the input thing. Why, why did I do that? Okay, there we go. I should have known something was sketchy. All right, very epic. Let us see. Plus work, I beg. There's the potential we might have to do some stuff at the end, but I think we're good. Okay, nice, let's go. Very epic. All right, number three. Bessie is a busy computer science graduate student. Very nice, she got her application in. Uh, however, even graduate students need friends. As a result, Farmer John has opened a pasture with the explicit purpose of helping Bessie and other cows form lasting friendships. Okay. Farmer John's pasture can be regarded as a large 2D grid of square cells. Okay. And each is... Okay, that makes sense. For two distinct cows to become friends, they must choose to meet at a grass-covered square that is directly horizontal. Okay. Okay, so they ought to be adjacent to it. Seems legit. During the process, they eat the grass in the grass-covered square, so future pair of cows cannot use it. Okay. So, the same cow may become friends with more than one other cow, but no pair of cows may meet and become friends more than once. Okay. So now you have, like, all this grass. Basically, the only way for them to meet up is if they're next to the same grass, right? Uh, so how many? So four. So we need, um, okay, so I guess these guys eat together. Or no, actually, these two guys. Okay, so those guys eat together. These guys eat together. So that's only, what? Okay, so two and two is here, and three, three. There they eat three, two, okay. Then, uh, two, two. Oh, oh, you can repeat the cows, okay, okay. So, essentially, okay, so essentially any cow, or any grass thing that, um, is surrounded by two cows can be eaten, right? So, essentially, you just need to find how many grasses are surrounded by two cows. So, this guy's surrounded by two cows, that guy's surrounded by two cows. Oh, but, oh, because they're surrounded by the same two cows, so that doesn't work. Um, this is surrounded by two cows, uh, this is surrounded by two cows, and that is not. So one, two, three. What? Okay, so three, two, two, three, three, four, and two, five. Okay, so this one's surrounded by two, this is, okay, these, okay. So the reason why you can't do both of these is because they have the same two cows, right? That seems kind of annoying if there are two cows that are shared between two grass patches, right? But I guess you could just look through every pair of cows. <laughs> uh, well, I guess, no, that's not going to work because there's like a thousand cows, potentially. No, there, there, there could be like 10 to the 6 cows, so that's not going to work. I mean, if you look at each grass, right, then you could basically count off which cows have been used, right, I guess. Well, the only situation where, um, where like, a one grass patch can't be used if it's used by two other cows is if the two cows next to it already have a friendship, or like need to have a friendship in order to eat another grass, right? So essentially if you have like G, C, C, G, then essentially you can only take one of these two. Um, if you have like C, then you could take both of them, right? So as long as the same two cows are not being used to eat multiple, then you're good. And the only time that same two cows can eat multiple, right, or if, if, if you have that, right? Because if you have like C, C, then you, if you put G there, there's no way for them to eat it together. If you put like C, G, C, there's no other like squares that are adjacent to both of them. So the only time you're going to have that problem is if you have this, right? And when is that fixed though? I guess when you have another cow, I suppose. Like in this case, the problem is that like, if these two cows did that, then it would be bad, right? So how do you like figure out which ones are good, which ones are bad? Because if you do that, then you could get like, this one, you could get that one, but you can't get that one. You only get one of these two. Huh. Oh, why don't we do like that? <laughs> that looks fun. Um, so you can get these two, if you, okay. But you can't get that one still. You can still get this one, and you could get that one. But if you add one more C, then you're good. Huh, that's actually kind of trippy, bro. What? Well, we only had to count cows that are next to the same, like, grass, right? So I guess... Okay, why don't we do it this way, right? So, so we can basically like do this, and we could say, uh, let's put the whole thing in, or at least the top part. And essentially, we could say this is like cow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so let's look at this guy. We could say uh, needs a two four, right? Then this guy needs a two four as well, right? Then this guy, this G, needs a, it's not possible, okay, this one needs either a 3, 4, or 
uh, 3-6 or a uh, 4-6, then this guy could either have um, 5, or okay, so some subset of 5, 6, 8, and then this one could have to have 4, 6, okay. Okay, so I guess like the idea is you always take the one, the guys who have only one option first, and then you could look at the ones that don't ha that have multiple options, right? I mean, there's a possibility, right, that even the one that has all these guys will eventually run out of options, right? So I guess the idea is you want to maximize how many things you get, right? So there's got to be like a really quick way to do this. I don't want to <laughs> code up something too fancy. Let's see. So each grass square can only have four things around it, right? So that means there's a maximum of six, like, pairs you can make from a single grass dude, right? Essentially, we can just keep track of, well, let's see, how many grass squares could you have? You could have, like, ten, like, ten of the six, right? And I guess if you do ten of the six times six, then that's not even that much, right? So we could basically just store all of the, um, all of the pairs that we have so far. Okay. Oh, okay, so basically we could just, like, push all of these things, like, to a thing and like order it based on length, right? And then once we have the short, then we take out the shortest ones first, and then eventually when we get to longer ones, we take one that hasn't been taken yet, right? But how do you, huh? Let's see. I feel like that's still kind of convoluted. Okay, let's see. If if you have like uh, G C C C, right? Is there any way to make it so that you can't get like this dude? I mean, if you do this and this, right, like, technically you could take these and then you won't be able to get that. I mean, theoretically you should be able to brute force it, right? But let's see, what's a good way to do that? I mean, the only options are you either go through all the pairs of cows or you go through all of the grasses, right? So, let's see. Okay, so let's just say we had all the possible pairs of cows, right? Then we go through each one and we add in the possible Gs, right? So... Uh, so let's just say, like, this cow could either have to eat that one, right? So, or, I don't know, so I guess each pair of cows have, like, certain... It can either be, like, um, grass patch 1, or it could be, like, grass patch 1 and 2, right? Like, the maximum number of things that can be shared by the same pair of cows is 2, right? And eventually you get, like, a bunch of these dudes, like, you have, like, 2, 3, maybe. And essentially you want to find the, um, the most of these that work without, like, um... The mo like the biggest number you can make if you just like flatten this down, right? Well, taking an, a single one is like not gonna eliminate anything necessarily, right? But taking a double one might eliminate a single one, right? So the idea is we take all the single ones first and then we look at what's left over for these guys. Okay, so let's just do that. Seems legit. I feel like that's gonna be pretty convoluted, but I think it should be fine. Okay. All right, time for a Python and we'll call it cow. A cow damia? Dude, I can't even say it right still. Bruh. Three. Okay. Call it N and L. Or no, what? N and M. And then we basically got our array. So how do you want to do that? So we'll have R is equal to some fat, like, I don't know, string thing? Uh, we could do strings dot. Okay, and then we do for I in range M. Oh, wait, uh, honestly, we could just do, like, strings, right? So we could just do, like, that, take that out, times, n, okay. r, i, is equal to input. Okay. So, now the idea is we want to figure out those, like, tuples, right? And how do we do that? Um, the best way to do that would be to... I mean, we could just have a dictionary, right? So we'll have dict is equal to... No, <laughs> that's taken. Um, tupes. <laughs> sure. Okay. And uh, we'll basically take, like, a pair of cows and we'll map it to the numbers that they could be. And then we'll keep track of the final grass patches that get eaten. Final is equal to set. So we'll do for i in range n, for k in range n, or m. And we should also have like our adjacent stuff so we can look all around each G and we could push stuff. Okay. So add is equal to uh one zero zero one negative one comma zero 
and zero comma negative one. Okay. So we basically look for i or for uh, p in ads, right? We will basically look up, down, left, and right, and we'll say next is equal to uh, i plus p zero comma, or we could just say like, why did I do it? K J seems more legit. Okay. Say next x or next n. We'll say next n, sure, is equal to i plus p0, and next m is equal to i plus p1. And then, if like all of these things are less than 0, or like in the range, right, then we had to check if it's a c. Okay. And we should probably keep track of which c's there are. So, c is equal to that. And if next n is greater than, or if 0, is less than or equal to next n is less than n, and 0 is less than or equal to next n is less than m, then if r, uh, this should be j, next uh, n, next m, is equal equal to c, and we should probably only do this if it is equal to G. So if um, uh, uh, R I J is not equal to G, then we got to continue. Okay, and if this is the case, then we just do C's dot push or dot append, and we'll push back our next n comma next n. All right, and then we just go through all the pairs of the tuples, right? Pairs of C's, and we like add them to our dictionary, right? So we basically would do for like I don't know. Uh, C and C's for, or we'll probably do like an I and J to make it easier for I in range len C's and a J in len that. Bro, why is this so <laughs> cancer? God dang it. Okay. Then essentially we'll just do tupes of, or like if, oh okay, so let's say our tupe is equal to our um, c's i comma c's j, this should be i plus 1, okay, and if uh, tupe not in tupes, then we gotta make um, tupes tupe <laughs> equal to a new list, alright. And then they'll just keep track of the possible stuff that it has. And we basically just do tupes tupe dot append. And we'll basically put the G that we have. So uh, we probably can't use, um, let's say, K and L. And we'll do append K or I comma J. Okay. So now when we print out tupes, it should basically give us all the possible things for each pair of C's, right? And then we basically just got to go through that and add stuff to our set. Okay, so basically we'll just well, let's just try printing tubes and see if that worked. Print n, let's see. Okay, it's four. Then why would that? What's print r? I guess. Oh, <laughs> okay, so I guess, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, we could probably just do, um, how, how do we do this? We could do 4i, yeah, 4i in range n. Let's try that. Okay, there we go. So, uh, 1, 3, and 0, 4, that's like 1, 3, and 0, 4. There is one option, right, for 2, 2, and 1, 3, right, that's 1, 3. Oh, yeah, 2, 2 is this, and 1, 3, you got two options, right? Oh, did I do this one right? Yeah, that's right. Um, 2, 2, and 1, 3. That's that. Okay. Well, why is it not 2, though? Shouldn't it, shouldn't it have been 2? Oh, oh, I guess it's not necessarily in order is the problem. Okay, we should probably sort it properly before we do that. So we'll do c.sort. 1, 3, okay, yeah, so now it has 2. All right, nice, nice, nice. Okay, very good. So we don't need this anymore. We don't need that anymore. 
and now we just gotta go through it for um, k and tups will basically just say for tups k well let's just try printing out k and see if that gives us the right stuff okay good and then essentially for or uh, for like I don't know toop in uh, toops k then essentially we just want to see whether it's already in the set if it's not in the set then we put it in right and we probably want to order it in terms of how many options it has right we want to put the one with only one option in first okay yeah why don't we do it like this we'll put it in an array to add okay and we'll put that and we'll do to add append to to add dot append to and then we'll just do uh, to add dot sort key is equal to lambda x len x okay all this does is basically we're going to sort it by length and then I guess at the end it should be fine right okay so you can see that um, oh whoops you don't want to add toops going to add toops k okay oh yeah so you can see the shorter list are first and then you add the longer list and now we could actually do our thing so we could do for um, two or k in toops or no for toop in or I guess it's a list for l in to add for toop in l if um, toop not in l I guess uh, not in final then we just do final dot insert top and we just break or no yeah we break okay and then at the end we break we just print out len of final okay or maybe it's final dot size I'm not sure entirely okay yeah, yeah. dot add okay four very nice okay <laughs> uh this part is kind of sketchy right like what happens if like two guys are overlapping I guess um let's see yeah, I think this should be fine because they can't really overlap in two spaces, so should be fine. Yeah, okay, should be good. I feel like this is a much more convoluted. There must be an easier solution to this, but I just coded it up because <laughs> that's the only one I could think of right then. Let's see. Whoops, not that. Okay, a moment of truth. Will this work? Oh, of course, Ben Chi wrote it. <laughs> that would make sense. Uh, this is a very low, high likelihood this doesn't work. Okay, all right. Does <laughs> this work? Oh, what is it gonna time out? What? How, how did it time out? Um, bruh, no. <laughs> God dang it. Okay, let's see. All right. To be fair, this is kind of <laughs> inefficient. There must be a faster way to do this. Let us see. <laughs> I don't know why I coded that. Like, I mean, the O of n complexity can't be that bad, right? <laughs> okay, let's see. Huh. I guess maybe it's kind of slow. There gotta be a fast way to do this though. Okay, so what's being slow here though? I don't really get it. So, that's fine. This should be fine. Um, this only goes to the G's, okay. This should be pretty fast, it's like 16, right? Huh, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like this is because Python is timing out though. Okay, let's do a quick test. So essentially we're just gonna like comment this out. Um, we'll print out four and we will see whether this is in time. Okay, so I guess this is the slow part. <laughs> that would make sense, I guess. Um, but why though? It's only one thousand though, right? Okay, so so can we speed this up somehow? Okay, yeah. Like I feel like, huh? So this is for sure within the time limit, right? Because it's only ten to the six, huh? Bruh, what is, is Python trolling me? Okay, let me. I'll just think a little bit for to see if there's a better solution in Python, but. I might have to switch to C++ if it's not gonna, it's gonna keep timing out on me, god dang it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, like, this is like the minimum amount of work you ought to do in Python, so, uh, I don't think there's any way we're gonna make it fast enough. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna switch it to C++, I don't think, <laughs> I think Python is just trolling me, hold up. Let us try this. Dude, holy bro, that took so long, what the heck. But yeah, eventually I converted to C++, but I did make a couple of changes that might have sped it up, so, uh, let's just look at it, so, Basically, one thing I did is that instead of like keeping track of all the pairs of cows and where they go to, um, you, the only reason you would have to like worry about all the possible like pairs of cows is if you have like two competing for the same for different grass squares, right? 
Like, the only thing we care about is if we have, like, C, C, G, G, right? That's the only thing we care about. So the only time that we're going to have like this is if there's no other option, right? Like, the, if, if we have this option, we'd always take that option, right? Because, <laughs> like, taking these L ones are bad, right? So the idea is, like, whenever you have, like, three or more around the same guy, that means there's got to be, like, a straight one. So you just take the straight one. And then if you have no choice, then you only then you, like, keep track of, like, the one you took, right? And then you just know that you can't take these two ever again. So, like, if you look at it over here, right, basically, instead, like, if, if the number of Cs is greater than 2, then you insert it into your final set. If it's equal to 2, then you basically check, is it already in the set? And if it's not already in the set, then you put it in the set, like, the only two that work, and then you uh, put in the grass one that you ate, right? So, let us see if we can actually put that in Python if, and see if that will actually work as well. Should not be too hard to modify, let us see. So, instead of this, or let me open up the other one too. So we'll have a thing called cows over here. And we probably do not need this. And we'll print out len of cows. And cows should equal a set. Okay. So essentially, we have this, we need this still. And now, if our if cs or len cs is equal equal to two or greater than two, then we just um, we just do final dot add ij. Otherwise, else elif len of cs is equal equal to two, then we just do um, we had a check or we did that a check if it's in the set, right? So if um, if uh, what cs zero comma cs1 is in the set is in cows or not in cows then we basically add it to cows cows dot add uh, cs0 comma cs1 and then we do uh, final dot add i comma j and this should work let us see whoops hold up if it is not in cows, which is right. But yeah, isn't that all I did in here? Uh, so yeah, after you sort it, that's all you gotta do. Oh, <laughs> final, final, len, final, okay. There we go. Hey, let's go, okay, let's test it out. Hopefully, I, I think it'll still time out on test case nine, but um, I guess it still works. Okay, moment of truth, let us see how many we get. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, <laughs> this is just proof that Python sucks, dude. What the heck? Bruh. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm angry now. Okay, you know what? We're just go gonna go with C++ and call it a day. Bruh. I'm so sad. Okay. Plus, C++, save me from the pain of Python, I beg. Alright, well, that's what I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. I don't know why Python is so trash. <laughs> don't ask me. Bruh. I mean, technically my initial solution in Python would have worked in C++ too, but I guess this is just like cleaner and it's less convoluted and it works too. So I guess that works too. But anyways, if you're interested, click on the videos up there. <laughs> if you guys want to subscribe, please subscribe. And if you guys want anything else, let me know in the comments. But other than that, thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.